Oh boy. <laughs> you ever notice how much more women are inclined to explore spirituality than men are? And in case you doubt my observation, just look around the room <laughs> and you'll see what I'm seeing. Could we turn this down just a little, please? Or if, well, I, gotta, I guess I have to trust you out there. Well, this, I asked, first of all, I'm completely honored to be here for four Sundays. The first thing I thought, of, thank you, thank you. The first thing I thought of when I made this commitment is I'm gonna have to come up with some new marriage jokes because <laughs> I can't tell you the same jokes every Sunday. I can tell you once uh, every three or four months because you don't remember them. But I can't tell you every Sunday. So, And I asked Ruth what today's, uh, this month's theme was. So I could try to plug into that. And she talked about will, individual willfulness versus uh, willingness. And... Of course, it brought up this idea of the, the Lord's Prayer. We say, thy will be done. You know, thy will be done. And we're always talking about aligning our individual will with divine will. And how do we do that? And what does it mean? And so we're going to explore that together today. Now, Sandy, my beautiful wife, who's here, my my tolerant, forgiving, kind, beloved wife. She says that if I, want to find, uh, if I want to follow divine will, then I should just do what she tells me. <laughs> but the, and she's probably right. However, not everyone here is married to Sandy. <laughs> so what are you going to do to follow divine will? I'm, you know, I've been speaking with all of you for many years now. And we, you notice that I don't talk a lot about God. My spirituality, my, my relationship with divine intelligence, it doesn't include a bearded man in the sky, nor a bearded woman, for that matter. <laughs> Even though I would be much more apt to believe that God is a woman, if we had to choose a gender, than a man. But I wanted to share this cartoon with you that I saw here. And there's, this is the throne, the divine throne, and the dog is sitting on it. And he says to this, this angel, the joyful, loving, eternally forgiving nature of dogs never tipped you off. <laughs> so what is divine? What is, what's going on here? Why do we come to unity every Sunday? What are we seeking? Well, in my understanding of life, you remember that song I've sung for you before, there once was a time when time, before time had begun, when the ocean of being was, I can't remember the words right now, but it was still one. So there's this infinite, unbounded ocean of cosmic intelligence. We call it the, the big self with a big S. Just infinite silence, pure potentiality, infinite intelligence, infinite energy. And one way to look at it is, is it, it is in the nature of that divine intelligence to play. So the intelligence said, I'm going to manifest and go looking for myself. That's the game. And this cosmic evolution from the tiniest 
subatomic particles to these bodies and these brains and these souls and this ability that only human beings have to know the self consciously. So it is through our full evolution as individual human beings that the fulfillment of this game of life that was created by this divine intelligence is fulfilled. We have spent eternity looking for ourself. God is not out there somewhere. I've, Ruth said that to me when she sh shared with me the unity, uh, the unity interpretation of God. We, God expresses her intelligence through us as individuals. Our lives are the embodiment, we are the expression of that divinity. So I just wanted to take you very quickly through some of the spectacular evidence of this divine intelligence. So we're going to look at this slideshow very quickly. It's got a lot of slides. This is from the Hubble Space um, Telescope. I love astronomy so much. We could go a little faster, please, Edwin. No? Okay. Better than me talking. You get, for sure. Wow. A nebula. Is that it? Oh, you must have started a little before I was. That's fine. That's perfect. That's perfect. So, one of the things that we need to grasp in order to understand what we, what I call divine intelligence, is that from that, if we let's just look at it from an astrophysical point of view from the Big Bang, when all of creation was contained in a singularity, a single point. And then this is what we see has evolved from that single point. That means that all the laws of nature and all the intelligence of nature must be contained in that singularity. All the laws of nature which govern the evolution of creation, including human evolution, have to be contained in that infinite, unbounded, unmanifest, silent value of our self. Okay? They're not, the laws of nature that conduct the evolution of life, they all operate from the subtlest to the most gross manifestation of this intelligence. They're the same laws of nature. So they have to exist at that subtlest level. So I asked why we come here each Sunday. Of course we come here for for uh, what do we sorry i'm not thinking of the word but you know uh, when we have relationships with unity, unity. <laughs> yeah that's that's the good word there's another word i was looking for hmm? what community fellowship yeah, yeah, all that yes yes but we're seeking something we might not even know what we're seeking but we're seeking deeper fulfillment deeper knowledge deeper relationship, greater awakening, more joy, more happiness. But I would say more than all of those, more peace. 
When I wish people birthday wishes, I always say, unshakable inner peace. That's what we all ultimately are seeking, that immovable, unshakable inner peace with which to live life, not as the end, but really as the beginning of living a life in freedom. Freedom comes from having gained that eternal, unbounded inner peace. Then we can live freely, but that fulfillment, that peace, Aside, what else does that allow us to do? It aligns our individuality, our individual consciousness, with all the laws of nature. So that our own thinking and our own actions are spontaneously aligned with nature, with natural law, with divine intelligence. If I give you a brand new piece of machinery, something brand new to you, and an, and an operator's manual, if you don't look at the operator's manual, you're going to have more difficult. I know all of the men say, I don't need the operation's <laughs> manual. I know that. I know that. I've been there, done that. Why don't you look at the operator's manual? I don't need it. Three hours later, where's the operations manual? <laughs> so, we have the ability. We're not talking about God being out there somewhere. We're talking about divine intelligence being. We are that. We are that. It is the. I, I've used this analogy many times with you before. It's as though. The, that silent, unbounded, infinite source of divine intelligence is like an ocean, silent ocean. And then it springs up into waves. And each of us represents a wave on that ocean. But we've forgotten that we are the ocean. And we think, oh, I'm just this wave, I'm changing, I'm dying, all of these other waves are changing, I'm in conflict with that wave. And... All this drama, all this story comes out of our confusion and our ignorance. Ignorance of what? Ignorance of who we are. However, intellectual understanding is only half of complete knowledge. We can understand that, oh yes, I am an expression of this divine intelligence that we see manifest in these spectacular images from the Hubble telescope. It's good that we have that understanding. I am not separate. It's good that we have the understanding that I have the ability to know that unbounded, infinite, unshakable inner value of life and to live my individual life based on my complete awareness, my complete unity with that value of myself. But intellectual understanding alone is not enough. And that's why we have these spiritual practices like meditation. We take the awareness from the gross individual value, I am the body, I am the mind, I am these thoughts, and we take it deep inside until we can transcend, go beyond even the faintest impulse of individual activity, thinking, and experience that wholeness that we are, that inner value of silence, that infinite ocean of energy and intelligence and will that is us. We are that. We are that. You've, there's a great, uh, it's called the Mahavakya. It's an expression in Vedic literature. I am that. I am that. I am that ocean, infinite, unbounded ocean of cosmic intelligence. 
So that's the reason I come. That's the reason that is the goal of my personal goal of my spiritual life is to open my intelligence completely, my awareness completely to that unbounded inner value that is myself with a big S. And not just experience it once, but through repeated contact, integrate completely, fully, my individual awareness with that divine inner value of my own self so that I have aligned my will with cosmic will. And what is the benefit in terms of day-to-day -day life? Well, have you ever tried going in a river and swimming against the current? That pretty much describes how most of us live our lives. And life is a struggle. Oh, life is a struggle. Of course it's a struggle. We're swimming against the current of divine intelligence, of divine evolution. But what do you think happens when we align ourselves with the flow of creation? Ah, oh, life is easy. Ah, I don't even have to... I don't even have to dog paddle here. I'm swept along effortlessly by cosmic intelligence, which is me, which is my intelligence. Not me, Jonas, the ego, but me, the unbounded source of creation. So if we want to be free, and uh, what's another benefit? I just got to get this one real quick. On the surface, life is changing. We might even say that on the surface, life is dying. Something is dying all the time. That's the surface value of life. And the ego doesn't like that chaos. And so what we do, and you might, if you... Back in the 60s, well, none of you were alive then, but if uh, Alan Watts, if you remember this guy, Alan Watts, a philosopher, an English philosopher, he said that the ego superimposes this grid, this kind of artificial reality. This is truth. This is the way it is. And then we gain uh, uh, egoically some sense of security from our belief system which the world is always rattling because no belief is absolute. No truth on the surface is absolute. For every, it's all relative, black, white, good, bad. So we are always at odds with life when we are dependent on our ego's reality reality that our ego is made up, that we maybe share with one another, but it doesn't make it any more true. I remember a story, uh, somebody asked this uh, great saint in India, they said, you know, if, if reality is just a projection of my consciousness, how come all these other people see the same thing as I do? And he said, because they're a projection of your consciousness too. <laughs> So, I don't know how many different ways I can say this or whether I can keep it interesting for four weeks. <laughs> but our path as spiritual aspirants is the path of knowing our deepest self which is divine, which is the source of creation, which is the key to living life as effortlessly and successfully and with greatest joy and happiness. Doesn't mean these bodies are gonna last forever. We know they won't. Doesn't mean everything we want. There is the past, maybe we'll have a, uh, one of these Sundays we might talk about karma a little.
the influence of past action. We don't know what that is, and we have collective karma. The world seems a little bit in chaos right now. But this is where we're heading, and this is what I have to share. I, you know, there are some relative tools we can teach how to resolve conflict when we're feeling it. You know, there, there are many techniques we can use, but ultimately it's always, it's all headed towards the same truth. That we are divine and that our journey is about discovering and knowing through direct experience as well as intellectual understanding that most powerful most peaceful, the only thing in life that does not change, that we can truly rely on, and that being relying on that, we are no longer in conflict with our artificial definition of reality and truth. So let's close our eyes and just explore the inner life that we are. Take a couple deep breaths, please. And whatever the thoughts may be, just allow them to be there and gently turn your attention to your heart center, right in the middle of your chest. And as you breathe, allow your attention to sink more deeply into that heart center. Continue to breathe, breathe naturally, and allow the attention to sink more and more deeply the cares of the world drifting away as you explore the deepest truth of who you are. I am not my body. I am not my thoughts. So who am I really? And as we gently ask this question, we find our attention sinking deeper and deeper into silence. Beyond words, beyond cares, beyond attachment, beyond questions. I am that I am. I am. And just continue for a few moments in that silence. And if the mind starts to drift, just gently come back to that heart center.
just gently begin to move and open the eyes when you're ready. So I want to take just one more minute to see if there is anything that you would like me to talk about for the rest of this month. Or if you have any good jokes I can tell. <laughs> anything that's on your mind, any questions or conflicts, I mean, we pretty much should have solved everything today. <laughs> yes, please. How about uh, loving your inner bully or loving your trouble? Uh huh. <laughs> loving our, <laughs> loving <laughs> your inner bully. That's that's um, that would loving. That's I I like that very much because all of us have expressions that according to maybe Jesus and Martin Luther King and Gandhi, maybe aren't the, the most uh, kindest expressions, loving expressions of ourselves. We can talk about that. That's good. Thank you. Anything else? Yes. Um, from your study, you study Eastern and Western traditions. How do they link? You know, how, do you... how do Eastern and Western traditions link? Good. Good. Um, yes, please, Gladys. How do we deal with the fear that's growing in our world? Very good. That's an, uh, Sandy, I'm not writing these down. Hold one second. Uh, with my memory, I'm going to get in the car and say, did anybody offer any <laughs> suggestions? So let's see. So we, the first one was dealing with our inner bully. Uh, the second one was East and West. And the third was... Fear, how to deal with fear. Very good. Yes, please. Why do we, why are we so far away from that inner knowing, that inner peace? Why don't we just, why are we not just born and aware and remain aware? Very good. So the question is, why does it seem that our individual Awareness is so disconnected from that inner divine. Very good. Did, Nina, did you have something? Well, I, it be, I think it'd be kind of fun to uh, imagine what the world would be like uh -huh. if we were more connected mm -hmm. to our peaceful center. What is a more spiritually evolved world, world look, look like? like? That would be fun. That would know. be very fun. I like that one. Okay, anything else? We anything else, please. I know the question that really is on everyone's mind most is how in the world has my wife stayed with me all these years? <laughs> <laughs> and so maybe we can get her to talk one of these Sundays about Love divine you. patience, infinite patience, <laughs> and forgiveness. Yes, Ruthie. I love it when you talk about Arjuna. Arjuna. Yeah. Okay, Arjuna. Arjuna from the Bhagavad Gita. Guess you're going to have to be here longer than a month. Say, say again? I guess you're going to have to be here longer than a month. Uh, well, <laughs> given my breadth of knowledge on these subjects, we could probably handle them all next Sunday. So... Okay, so I think uh, anything, one last person, and you can always approach me after if you, th if you don't want to speak it out publicly. Yes, please. Forgiveness. Forgiveness is a lovely topic always. Very good. Okay, so I love you all, and I'm so, so, so grateful and, uh, and honored 
that you would have me come share what modest knowledge I may have. And it gives me an opportunity to go deep and to explore that for myself. You know, they say, always say the teacher learns the most, the teacher gains the most. And, and Sandy would say the teacher needs to learn the most, <laughs> but in my case. So blessings and, and we'll try to keep it stimulating and joyful and engaging for the rest of this month. Thank you.